to say welcome and thank you for coming to Lagos. Lagos is a very important city in Nigeria and in Africa. Some have said that the economy of Lagos is uh, bigger than the economy of some uh, countries. And while uh, our beautiful Addis in Ethiopia may be the political capital of Africa, I'm proud to say that this week, Lagos is the entrepreneurship capital of Africa. <laughs> and it is no accident that our foundation has chosen to hold the forum in Lagos every year. You may go to several other African cities for history, architecture, medicine, uh, beaches, and safaris, to mention but a few. And the truth is, they are great countries or cities. But if you want to feel the essence of entrepreneurship in Africa, the flow of ideas, the buzz of opportunity, the home of economic growth, and the heat of competition, come to Lagos. <laughs> the reason we are gathered here today is to fulfill the two Tony El Melo Foundation promises. The first promise is to invest 100 million US dollars to identify, train, mentor, and seed 10,000 entrepreneurs, 10,000 of you in 10 years. The second is to improve the enabling environment for all African entrepreneurs, and I'm happy Lerato and our leaders have talked about this. It's a continuing process. We can't finish everything, everything here. If you look at the sea of t-shirts behind you and at each uh, other, you know we are keeping the first promise. To me, that is difficult because money is scarce, but not as difficult as the second one. The second promise is much harder than spending 100 million US dollars. Because we cannot order infrastructure on the internet. It takes time. No, um, the minister said 170 billion naira in this budget for infrastructure. And the question that came was, where is it? It is because infrastructure doesn't just occur overnight. It's not something you order on the internet or just proclaim and it happens. Donors also don't dash us good policy. We have to enact and put practice good policies ourselves. And we can't just wait for luck to send out the caliber of political leaders as we have seen on the stage today. We have to engage and put pressure on ourselves and our leaders to do more. We want our leaders to do more. And friends of Africa, uh, we need to begin to work together to see how we can give more economic hope and empowerment to this 63,000 people who have been, I won't say, let's say unselected, who have not been chosen. They need the opportunity that the great young African men and women here have. I have carried this message with me from Dakar to Dar es Salaam and from Kampala to Kigali to Cape Town, and in fact, just on Monday to Paris. To have this conversation with our political leaders and friends of Africa, that young, we have energetic and creative young Africans who can change the face of this continent, but that they need help. The last, uh, Lerato was asking our uh, great speakers, what is it that African entrepreneur that you want to succeed or need more likely to succeed? And I, I like all the answers from, from, from the intangible to the tangible answers. They are correct. But one thing we need to say to our friends from outside Africa is in the 21st century, and to not just to us outside Africa, to ourselves also, one is that no one but us will develop Africa. So we need to look in what within, especially those who are blessed and endowed, to see how we can share prosperity. Because ultimately, it is not how much we have in our bank account that counts. What can when we are gone from this world, it's the legacy we leave behind. The impact that we make and the helping hand we give to others. Because at some point in our lives, we all have had to enjoy that. The second thing is, message is, 
in the 21st century, and I think the president, President Koroma, captured it very well. The way we give must be such that helps us to create self-sufficiency, self-independence, self-dignity, that helps us to become fishermen, and not keeping up perpetually begging or waiting for the next hand to come. That has been the case in Africa for the past several decades. At a time like this, we need to engage with ourselves and with the rest of the world to say we appreciate the giving, but we realize, have realized that economic empowerment is the best and most sustainable form of giving. That we desire, that we desire and that we must give to ourselves and our friends should help us on this journey. The challenge is to tell us how you, our friends, and endowed brothers and sisters, we take action to support African entrepreneurs and improve the enabling environment for entrepreneurs to succeed. And I'm delighted to inform you that we are off to a great start. First, the Nigerian government has accepted the Tony Elmelu Foundation Challenge and committed to working with us to improve the enabling environment for entrepreneurs in the much neglected yet growing creative industries. I promise you that we will continue to throw out this challenge to all our stakeholders to do more. Government stakeholders, private stakeholders, and that leaders on the continent, friends of Africa, who love Africa, we need to do more in a manner like this that helps empower our people. And every year of the forum, we will give a platform to various stakeholders to respond to this challenge, to stand and deliver on their promises to be part of a better future for Africa. And I have no problem giving you examples of the kinds of commitment we hope to secure in the coming years. We want to see tax relief. We want to see incentives and singular collection points for federal, state, and local business taxes in the, in our, in our, in the country. In fact, the CC Hub, not long ago, we we celebrated the visit of Mark Zuckerberg to, to the Facebook founders to, to Nigeria. I'm proud to say that the Tony Elmelo Foundation provided seed capital of $5,000 each to 20 Nigerian startups in that hub when they started. That was where we said, wow, you mean 5,000 can have significant impact and maybe let's replicate it on a global, on a pan African uh, scale because we gave $5,000 to just 20, and I recall a certain magazine, online publication in South Africa, writing to say, what can $5,000 do? But we have seen from the successes of yourselves and your predecessors, and from what Prime Minister Zinzu said, it is capital needed at the most critical phase of entrepreneurial journey, when all you have is an idea. Anyway, the CC Hub has grown to attract the attention of uh, people like Mark Zuckerberg, and um, we saw the potential earlier, and more of these types of gems should be given, not a handout, as we say, as we believe at our foundation, but a handout. These young Africans truly are not interested in charity. They want the right environment, and they want little help to come up and they can explode. The truth and the dream and the vision you must have seen from the documentary, we want to create our own Mark Zuckerberg from Africa in you. We want to have our own Steve Jobs in you. And you can do this. You can even do more. So I challenge more stakeholders to come here next year to this very stage and tell us what you will do to support Afghan entrepreneurs and the enabling environment for them to succeed.